Hello, this is In the Studio, and I'm your host today, Martha Teeter. Our topic is Paul's Place at 1111 H Street. And we have some other media that is available to learn about this program that you can see. Uh, one is a DCTV show, the Timely Topics program, and uh, the other is a KDRT Davisville show. Both of them can be seen by searching for Paul's Place at davismedia.org. And today, my guest is Bill Pride. Hi, Martha. How are you doing? Hi, Bill. And Bill is the executive director of Davis Community Meals and Housing. Yes. Thank you for coming in. You're welcome. <laughs> Davis is very fortunate as a community to have a lot of volunteers who have cared for those less fortunate. And a number of years ago, 20, 25, that resulted in the formation of a nonprofit called Davis Community Meals, and uh, they began serving meals at St. Martin. Yes, we started off as an all-volunteer organization back in 1991, where we first served our first meal over at St. Martin's in February of 1991. Wow. And we've evolved from then. We still have a lot of volunteers we get from the community, from different faith groups, from the university, from high school groups, Girl Scouts, right. Boy Scouts, service organizations. Yeah, we use probably about 1,500, 2,000 volunteers a year who come to us to help out. That's amazing. And we've evolved from just doing a meal program to having multiple meals during the week and also a whole range of other programs serving low-income and homeless folks. Great. And then I guess that in a couple of years after the start resulted in a, a facility on H Street? Yes. About three years after we first opened our meals program, we worked with the City of Davis to acquire our 1111 H Street property, which we've used as a day shelter resource center and also the transitional housing program for the last 20-something uh, hmm. uh, years. Wow. Yeah, and that was... Uh, Purchased then by the nonprofit uh, yes. with some help? Yeah, we owned, the, the city helped us with financing from mm -hmm. some, I think it was housing trust funds, mm -hmm. and we used some other funding we had from some other sources to take what was originally two single family residents on the, on the site yeah. and join them and turn it into somewhat what it is today, or, like I said, the Day Shelter Resource Center and Transitional Housing Program. Mm -hmm. And I guess that would always be used then to serve those who are experiencing homelessness. Yes, that, was, that yeah. was part of our agreement with the city, which was right. that they're going to give us the money in return that you know, we're obligated to operate the facility and use the facility to help homeless and low-income folks. Excellent. Good. But I understand that the facility is showing a little wear and is a little under um, capacity. Well, the facility, like I said, they were, they were actually like single-family residences. Yeah. yeah, I think we have a and, picture of that. Um, you know, we took those single-family residents and made it into what it is today. So we house, we house up to, right now, up to 12 folks. Mm -hmm. uh, during the day, when our resource center is open, we have another 40, 50, 60, sometimes 70 folks come in to see us. Wow. And, you know, we have a lot of services about letting people go uh, take a shower, do laundry, uh, pretty much all different types of services and needs that people may have. And, but for a two single family residence, it gets a whole heck of a lot of use from, yeah. you know, it's not used to having that many folks come in and use right. the facility. And we've done a couple of renovations over the years, one in mm -hmm. 2001 and one in uh, 2009. But even with those two renovations, it's showing a lot of wear and tear. And, mm -hmm. you know, some of the, it's, it's, there's not enough bathrooms, not enough showers for folks. Yeah, just like one bathroom for? We have one bathroom, one shower for the folks wow. coming into the day shelter. And, when we're only open to the public from 8 to 12, when you have 30, 40, 50, 60 people coming in, mm -hmm. it doesn't give a lot of time and a lot of people aren't able to take showers and right. use the facilities the way they might otherwise. Yeah, yeah. And I understand you have four to a room for your transitional Yes. Program. And the, 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 the house, like I said, small residential home, the bedrooms are 8 by 10, oh maybe a little bit larger. <laughs> But we have four adults living in each each room, and we have twelve men, up to f up to four women, and there's two bunk beds in each room, and so it's very crowded. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's difficult. 
Yeah, so um, recently another nonprofit that I've been involved with, Davis Opportunity Village, has been looking at ways to get micro housing to help um, house homeless individuals. And uh, we've had a lot of difficulty finding land. So the city uh, has connected our two nonprofits and um, our, we have an architect on our board, Maria Gridziak, who sat down with a lot of the people involved in serving those experiencing homelessness with, um, with yourself, with the police, with um, the public housing authority, Yolo County Housing, and um, she has designed a facility that is uh, what we see on the next pl slide, Paul's Place at 1111 H Street. Yes. Which is a very exciting And it, it is very exciting. I mean, I, I think it combines, you know, what we're currently doing on the, on the, on the site, which is the Resource Center Transition mm -hmm. Housing Program, and marries it with two floors of micro-housing, 18 units of permanent supportive housing for homeless and low-income folks. Wow. And I think it's a great, great project. I mean, it will give us expanded resource center facility so we have more room for folks to use, more bathrooms, more showers, more laundry, so people will be more efficient in serving folks. Uh, the second floor with the transitional housing will go from four people to a room to individual bedrooms for ten. And then we will have uh, the two up, upper floors with uh, these micro housing units of approximately 300 square feet apiece. Mm -hmm. And it will be 18 total units spread out over those two floors. Yeah. Yeah, actually, we, I think we have a picture of the micro units too, micro homes. Micro homes. <laughs> and uh, Maria was saying it's kind of designed like a little urban tiny house village with a common meeting area in the middle and uh, the homes actually about the same dimensions as they would be on a, a flatbed truck moved around. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but there's uh, plenty um, of room for people with disabilities uh, it, it'll, be, it'll be safe and stable housing for those folks who are the most vulnerable in the streets yeah uh, homeless folks who are either chronically homeless or suffer from some kind of disability and so I think it's a wonderful project to help get a number of folks off the streets of Davis excellent excellent and I think that uh, in in developing the program um, one of the people uh, on Yolo County Housing pointed out that it's a kind of model having the multifunctional housing, the permanent supportive, transitional, and it will also have, I guess, some an emergency housing too. Yes, there'll be emergency shelter beds in the first floor <clears throat> that we're going to work with the uh, different agencies to have access to folks who need like that emergency shelter throughout the year. Mm -hmm. So combining that with a resource center is something that many communities might be interested in replicating. Not many communities have resource centers anymore, unfortunately, <laughs> not because not yet. But I mean, that's been that's been I think a uh, uh, a lot of resource centers not survived the economic downturn and cutbacks in funding from several, several places. See. So, mm -hmm. you know, we're one of the last standing, I think, doing that type mm -hmm. of service, frankly. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think it's an ideal way to kind of marry different programs into one building. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, provide kind of more services for the for the folks in Davis who are living with our housing. Wow, excellent! Well, it sounds very exciting, and I guess the um, <clears throat> the people who are the most vulnerable are the ones that are the intended uh, people to go in the permanent yes. supportive housing. So there won't be barriers. It'll be. Um, Housing first type of model. It's it's a model that's going to allow folks with you know serious mental health issues, mm -hmm. substance abuse issues, and those uh, physical disabilities or some combination thereof to give them a safe and stable home. That's great. That's great. And this is something I think that you've been involved with in the community, uh, different kind of housing. What tell well, me we about have. that? We've had we've operated permanent supportive housing for the last ten years. Hmm. over at Cesar Chavez Plaza on Olive Drive. Okay. And we've been doing that successfully for the last 10 years. I mean, we have staff on site, and you know, the prime function to me is to, when people move in is to make sure they stay. Mm -hmm. So that means doing a whole, lots of different things for lots of different folks depending upon their needs and their ability to kind of you know, stay housed. But I mean, mm -hmm. we just, our function there I think is 
primary function is just keeping people housed. Mm -hmm. And we also have another, you know, permanent supportive housing program that we're going to be developing over the next year or two, Creekside Courts, mm -hmm. which hopefully will be, it's already received city council approval, hopefully we'll have a groundbreaking this year, and hopefully open sometime towards the end of 2019. That's great. And so this, this project, PaulsPlaceDavis.org, is where, the, where it's um, oriented. And uh, you can see the, on the map some of those different um, places that serve um, homeless individuals. It's not concentrated in one place. The housing is, is spread around Davis. Yeah, I think, you know, we have programs pretty much all over Davis at this point in time, from South Davis to Olive Drive to <clears throat> there's other programs run by the um, Power Yo, the Domestic Violence Shelter in, mm -hmm. in Davis. So services are spread pretty much throughout uh, the Davis community. And I know the map doesn't show up, but there's also lots of different affordable housing options for folks, whether it's for seniors or for a general population. And pretty much anywhere in Davis, from east to west, north to south, as those projects are located. Yeah, that's great. So yeah, completely spread all yes. over Davis. Yeah, and the um, the site where Eleven Eleven H Street is that's that's by the railroad tracks, is it? It's by the railroad tracks on H Street, which runs parallel to the railroad tracks up towards the Little League Field, the back of Little League Fields. Mm -hmm. And I, as I remember, it's screened from the um, the neighborhood. Where the, um, yeah, there's, there's lots of trees on our, on our property and also on neighborhood properties. Uh, there's also to the north an apartment complex, a two-story apartment complex, mm -hmm. and also to the west another apartment complex mm -hmm. abutting the back of the property. Mm -hmm. And at the corner next to us is a duplex. Mm -hmm. So it, it fits right in with the uh, apartments in the neighborhood in, yes. in that regard, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not going to really change our use there all that much, frankly, because I don't really expect that we're going to see, it's going to be a bigger facility, I just don't think it's going to, you know, we have a certain homeless population, Davis, it's been, you know, rather static for a number of years, it's increased a little bit the last couple, but I don't necessarily think it's going to have many more folks there than currently go there now. Mm -hmm. 30, yeah, 40, so 50, it's 60. you've you've um, the model redesigns the and um, improves in a sense the resource centers. It, it improves. Not it really, gives, it makes yeah. improvements to what we're able to do now. Yeah. Um, but I don't necessarily think it's it's not anywhere that's going to you know, uh, it's not ready for a hundred people though either. Right. So, you know, it's right. pretty much it's pretty much made to serve the population we currently serve in a more efficient manner. That's excellent. That's really great. Yeah. Yeah, to make that better. Yeah, I think this is a real community asset. I think this is something a lot of people will get excited about because it can um, really improve our community. I think I've seen they can they um, that property values actually can increase in the neighborhood of a good housing project like this, not go down as many think they do. And also that the cost to the community of, of uh, public services, emergency services, decreases by 50% at least. Well, I think folks who are actually move in this, into housing, they're getting the needs and medical needs, mm -hmm. others' needs met differently than they're being out in the streets. Yeah. So it certainly results in them being uh, a less costly or to end they're being on the streets where they don't really have access to any services. Right, so. right. Right, and uh, it improves the whole neighborhood, in fact, the whole community yes. that way. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I think we can find out more about this at the PulsePlaceDavis.org website, or you can email directly Bill Pry. Um, that information is up on your screen. And... Um, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. This is a really exciting, a fascinating program. I think it's going to be a real boon to Davis and put Davis on the map, let's say, about yes. addressing homelessness. So I want to thank you so much for joining us today uh, and on in the studio. Thank you. Thank you.